Are you in bed already? Good night, little Coco. this happened before? Have you woken up and had your dog eat your favourite shoes? Well, it's happened to me a number of times, but I've got you covered. Stick with me and I'll show you how to turn this into this. So the things we are going to need are acetone. This is pure acetone and I purchased it from Bunnings in Australia. Some cotton tips. I'm going to be using those for the acetone. Some glue. This is Sikabond Contact Fix Glue. It's a high strength premium contact adhesive that's flexible. In the interest of safety, I am just going to use some rubber gloves while I'm using the acetone so it doesn't get all over my hands. We're going to need a hammer and some eyelets and some fabric. So today I will be using, this is cotton canvas. This is cotton canvas. I'll be using this for the lining and this for the tongue of the shoe and this is going to be for the outside. This is just a quilting cotton which will be laid over the cotton canvas. And finally we're going to need our destroyed pair of Converse. These are relatively new uh, as you can see there's nothing wrong with them at all apart from the fact that my dog decided to eat one of them mm. so let's try and fix them see if we can cobbler them up um, so this is my take on the converse hack or the converse remake or the converse recover or whatever you want to call it let's give it a crack I'm going to take the shoelaces out first. Let the surgery begin. The first thing we're going to do is remove the inner sole. And to do that, we are going to use the acetone. Acetone should dissolve or at least loosen up the glue that's underneath. So just with your Q-tip, keep wiping along until you can actually get that insole out. Now I'm just going to go around the felt insole. You'll see that there's a line of stitches holding it to the sides. So I'm just going to get a knife and cut those stitches. Just go slow, take it easy. Go all the way around. It does get a bit tricky when you get to the toe part of the shoe because it's really difficult to get in there, but just persevere. The first idea I had was to get acetone and rub it with a Q-tip, like make a small hole to separate where the rubber joins the outer and try and dissolve the uh, glue that way, but it wasn't really working. So I've decided to just go the whole hog and pour acetone inside the shoe. Okay, so I'm just pouring the acetone in there quite liberally. I really want that to get in there 
and wet through the canvas onto the rubber sole um, and I want that glue to dissolve. So I'm just going to go around and making sure that all parts of where the rubber sole joins the canvas is wet and then I'm just going to leave it. We'll just wait a couple of minutes and then have a look. Ah, oh, thank God it worked. Okay, so now let's just go around the whole shoe, peeling off the canvas from the rubber sole. Just keep working your way around. Um, if there are any stitches that you missed, make sure you cut them. And just be really careful when you get to the toe part. You don't want to break the rubber part. You don't want to put a tear in it or anything. So if you need to use a little bit more acetone, go ahead and do that. And easy does it, it, but it will come out. All right. Now, I'm just going to unpick any of those stitches along there to make sure that it's not uh, being held together because we want it to be flat. What I'm doing is removing the threads there because they are... Um, a little bunched up so you'll see that while it's curved at the moment when I take the stitches out it'll be nice and flush okay what I'm going to do is starting with the right shoe I'm going to unpick all these pieces so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to unpick that just use your seam ripper Next, I'm going to take off, see what's the easiest. Okay, on the lining, I'm going to take the heel support off. Here's my heel support, set that aside. Now on this side, We've got this part of the heel support, which I'm going to take off next. And to do that, I'm just undoing a couple of stitches first. So I'm going to be able to get a little hole for myself to get in there. Here are the pieces of my right shoe. Now, these two pieces are exactly the same and they are also exactly the same on the other shoe. So all of these pieces you can cut for both shoes. Let's make a template. I hope you're enjoying the Billy 50 tutorials. Please subscribe to this page and like this video. Click on the little bell if you'd like to be notified of any new release videos as soon as they're available. Now that we have dismantled our shoe, these are the pieces you're going to have. Two sides, one tongue, and your internal and external support for the back. We're going to start with the side. Trace all around your piece. Mark out where the holes are going to go for your little grommets. Put a seam allowance across the top and down the back of the shoe. And then mark out your stitch lines and the glue area. Cut out your template. And this piece will be used for the left and right side of the one shoe and for your lining. Moving on to the tongue. Trace around your tongue piece. Mark out where the lace runner goes and where the label goes. There is no need to add a seam allowance as we'll be doing this piece on the overlocker so no seam allowance is required. Cut out your piece. This piece will be used for both the inside and outside of the tongue. And now set that aside as well. 
Moving on to the internal back support. Trace around the back support, add a seam allowance across the top and cut the piece out. I've decided I'm going to use this stuff. Iron on interfacing, um, adds structure and firm support to garments for dresses, skirts, purses, bags, hats and costumes and some shoes. So I got that from Spotlight in Australia. Using the internal back support template you created in the last step, take that and trace out two pieces on your stabilizer. And lastly, the external back support. Now this piece here, it's three quarters of an inch wide and three inches long. On the sides, I'm going to add half an inch each side. And that will be that when it is folded in half. It's going to be wrapped around like that. That'll be our support. Okay. Take your cotton canvas and fold it in half right sides together. Take your quilting cotton for the outer and fold that in half as well right sides together. This will give us a left and right side of the shoe. Place your template on top of the four layers of fabric. Using a fabric pen with erasable ink, trace around your template. And I am just going to make a quick hole in each of these. That's where I know where to put my little grommets and I'm just going to make a little circle and again I'm going to do the same thing here and that'll give me the left and right side of my shoe Now we can cut that out. Use some pins to hold the four layers of fabric in place before you cut them. Then cut out your fabric as best you can on the line. All right. Got my shoes. So I've taken my black cotton canvas and I've just folded it right sides together. And I'm going to cut four of these because I need a front and a back for two shoes. I'm going to cut two of those and two of those. Again, before you start cutting, use pins to hold the layers of fabric together and then cut around each piece right on the line. And this is what you will end up with. Now, one little thing I am going to do before we move on, where we marked all the little holes for the grommets, I am going to puncture a hole now before I separate any of these to make sure they're all in the same spot. All right. So now we can take the pins out.
there we have our shoes. <laughs> well, they're starting to look like shoes, aren't they? So this is for one shoe. So we've got our left and our right, and this is for the other shoe, left and right sides. The inner heel support for both shoes and the tongue for both shoes are done on the overlocker. So here we have the inner heel support pieces and the tongue pieces. We'll start with the inner heel support. You have one piece that you already have cut out and we have cut out our inner stabilizer and we are going to fuse that to some black canvas. And we're going to take our scissors and cut that out. So we're cutting it out exactly on the edge. We're not leaving any allowance because we've already included our seam allowance on the pattern. So now we have that. Now we're going to take our other piece and put it over the top. So our right sides are facing out and then we are going to stitch all the way around on our overlocker. When we do this, so we've got our right sides out, our stabilizer on the inside. We're gonna make sure that it's exactly in the right spot. And when we do this, we don't want the blade to be cutting anything off. We just wanna go around the edges exactly. Now you can take this as slow as you want because you want it to be perfect. Okay, so now you can see that it's stitched all the way around on both sides. Okay, now for our tongue. We have two pieces already cut and we're going to put them so the right sides are facing out. So wrong sides together. And then again, we're going to take that to the overlocker and exactly on the edge without cutting anything off, we're going to stitch all the way around. And again, same thing all the way around, try not to cut anything off. And there you have, so you can see again, it's stitched. It's a little bit hard to see in this light, but you can see that we have stitched all the way around on both sides. And this is what we end up with. So we've got, can you see that? Got our one piece heel support. You'll have two of those. And our tongue sewn all the way around. We'll just trim off those little threads and we're good to go. Repeat that process for the other shoe because you'll end up with two of those and two of those. Starting with the right shoe, we're going to take these two pieces and place them face to face, right sides together, and we're going to stitch straight down the back of the lining. Take your lining piece and open it up. Lay it face up on the table. Take your inner heel support, fold it in half to find the halfway point and then position it on your piece like this. Just leave enough room at the top for your seam allowance. Once you've got it in place, secure it with some pins. Then take it to the machine and sew along the curved and bottom lines. Okay. 
and this is how it should look. Now take your outer pieces, lay them right sides together and stitch down the back of the heel. Lay your outer pieces face up on the table and take your external heel support. Iron it so your two edges are folded into the middle and position it along the seam that you just created on the back of the shoe. Using pins, secure it in place, making sure that it is centered on that seam. Remember there is a slight curve in this, so it may take a couple of tries to pin it exactly because you don't want any lumps or bumps in there, especially on the back of your heel. Take it to the machine and stitch down either side of the heel support. Take your completed piece and lay it face up on the table and then take your lining piece and lie that down on top face down. Line up your centre seams and clip them in place. Now using Wonder Clips, clip all the way along the top edge of your panels. If you've done everything correctly so far, your panels will line up perfectly. Now we need to take this over to the machine and top stitch using our seam allowance all the way along the top. I created my seam allowance the exact same size as the right side of my foot. So when I line up my foot with the edge of the material, it's really easy to sew exactly on that seam allowance. Now turn your panel out the right way. Make sure you use your fingers to push out any little curves to make sure that the whole panel is sitting correctly. Finger press the edges and then take it to the iron and press it in place. Now we are going to start creating the top stitching. As you can see here on our old panel, we've got a double line of stitching that goes all the way around the panel. Take it to the machine and do your double line of stitching along the top edge of the panel. Using the holes we created earlier, take your leather punch or your hole punch and make sure that those holes do go through both panels. And then insert your grommets or eyelets or whatever you want to call them. Take the label off the old tongue and place it on the new tongue. Use the markings you made on your template to help you position it in the correct spot. You can stitch down both sides using either a zigzag stitch or a straight stitch to secure it in place. Now we're going to create the double line of decorative stitching underneath the grommets. 
Take your old panel and sit it on top and use that as a reference to help mark out where the stitching lines need to go. I'm using a chalk pen. You can use a chalk pen or an erasable fabric marker to mark out the lines. This way, it doesn't matter if you draw along the top of your fabric, it'll be able to wash out later on. Once you're happy with that, take it across to the machine and sew your double line of stitching across both sides of the panel. Now we are going to secure the tongue to the panels. I'm going to take the old tongue and the new tongue and I'm going to lay the old tongue on top of the new tongue and I'm going to mark out that square on the corner. I'm using chalk to mark the position and then I'm going to place my panel over the top and sit them side by side to make sure I've got it in exactly the right spot. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to clip my panel to the tongue I'm going to clip the other side to the tongue as well. And then I'm going to stitch a double line in the shape of a square to secure it in place, just like it was on the old one. And this is what we end up with. Now we're going to make the bottom of the panels. Essentially, we're going to make it look like a little slipper. This is the part that's going to get glued down to the sole of the shoe, and then your insole will go over the top. I'm using a soft felt for this. Take your insole and trace around it with a texture. Make sure you trace a left and a right foot. Don't do both the same cut out your pieces. Now, essentially up until now, our little booties have been not left or right. Putting the little sole onto them now will make them a left or a right shoe. So we're going to need to take note of that. And as I said, make sure you're cutting one right and one left. Now, starting at the center back with your wrong sides together, that's right, your wrong sides together, start to clip your sole onto your side panels. So starting at the back, put one clip and then turn it around and put one at the front and then clip down the sides until it all sits nice and evenly. A little bit of a tip here for you, because your sole piece is a felt or a, some sort of wind cheater material or fleece, it will be stretchy. So when you're putting it in, it's important that you don't pull or stretch it. You need to fit your panels to the shape of the sole. Don't stretch the sole to fit the side of the panels or else your booty is going to end up all out of whack and it won't sit properly. By clipping your wrong sides together, it means your stitch line will be on the outside of the panels. So your little booty should be the right way out like you're going to slip it onto your foot. Once you're happy with that, you can take it to the machine and stitch as close to the edge as you can all the way around. It might actually feel a little bit counterintuitive to actually be sewing the seam on the outside, but that's how it's got to be done. And this is what you'll end up with. I hope you're enjoying the Billy 50 tutorials. Please subscribe to this page and like this video. Click on the little bell if you'd like to be notified of any new release videos as soon as they're available. All your pieces are now complete and this is what you should have. And now we've finally come to the most exciting part, assembling our shoe. Now before I started gluing everything, I thoroughly washed the sole of my shoe. Mine was a little bit dirty, so I cleaned it up. I gave it a good scrubbing. 
Um, I also wiped down the inside of the shoe and then I left it to dry thoroughly. So it must be thoroughly dry before you move on to the gluing step. So take your glue and your brush and start painting it on everywhere. Make sure that you completely cover the sole of the shoe, the sides of the shoes, the back of the shoes and pay extra special attention to where the toe part is. So underneath and on the sides, make sure you get that whole area underneath. Your glue will start becoming a little bit tacky. That's okay, just set the sole aside and pick up your little booty. Now you need to paint the glue onto the booty. So make sure that you completely cover the sole Cover the side area that you marked on your template as glue and then you need to do the part on the toe as well. So anywhere there's glue on the sole, you want to have glue on the booty to make them stick together. And then we want to carefully push that booty into the sole. Be very careful that you don't squish it the wrong way and get glue all over the parts that you're not meant to get glue. So just gently push it in with your hand Push your hand right up into that toe part to make sure that everything is sitting nice and flat up there. And then take your fingers and go around every single part of the shoe and push really hard to make sure you have a firm grip between the booty and the sole. Now, if you do see any parts that you think might be lacking glue, just go back with your brush and add a little bit more glue, but be careful not to get it on any of the outer panel of the shoe that you're going to see. Once you're happy with that, set that aside for 15 minutes while you do the other shoe and then come back for the inner sole. Now, if your inner soles are still in good condition, you can use the ones that you took out of your shoes. If not, you can just buy some more at the supermarket. Cover the bottom of the inner sole completely in glue and then glue the inside of the shoe as well, the bottom of the inside of the shoe and then push that on in there. Push it down nice and firm and make sure that it's stuck good and proper. And then again, go around for one last check around the sides and the toe area and the heel area to make sure that everything is stuck down properly. If you need to do any glue touch-ups, do them now. And there you have it. One brand new pair of Converse All-Stars. Don't throw out your old shoes. Just take them apart and make some new ones. If your soles are in good condition, there's no reason why you can't make another pair for yourself. And that's how we upcycle, remake, revamp, change, make new, recycle, create our own Converse All-Stars. And that's all I got for you today, folks. But make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. And click on the little bell if you'd like to be notified when more videos like this are available. <laughs>